let's go. Okay, hey everybody, this is Brett from Moonstream Crypto and um, Crypto Mastery. We're going to look at some news and charts and, of course, talk about CPI for this week. So let's go ahead and dive in. So, um, you know, I'll work my way over to CPI here. We've got uh, Bitcoin, this article saying, risking a double top. You know, we have been teetering on the, um, you know, this is talking about from the 2021 cycle high, and that would be more of a triple top. Um, I'll show you in the charts. Let's unpack the article a little bit. All of this sort of background noise because we're waiting on CPI numbers this week. And my gut feeling is they'll come in favorable and we'll see a bit of a rally, but uh, it, it's, uh, we don't know. We have to prepare for both ways. <clears throat> so basically, the um, we're talking about here July. Now, somewhere else I saw somebody say July typically is a bullish month. Uh, I don't agree with that. I remember distinctly actually sitting at this very table in the 2021 summer of July 2021, where we had that basically overnight crash. It really just dumped quite a bit. Created an excellent buying opportunity in the second half of July. But uh, that was only after it dumped and, and we had a, a nice sell off there. So, um, you know, all of this about what does it usually do? All bets are off. This this cycle is different. And I would just say, let's keep our eyes open for anything. And so this article going on to say that after its weekly, lowest weekly close in four months. So, you know, of course, we've been seeing this sell off here based on some other reasons we're going to get to in the other articles here. Pontificating on where will the market wind up? Uh, I've been circulating my charts and predictions where I think things will go. And so I think we'll get a bit of a bounce here and push up to around 66K. There's some sell pressure there and then maybe a pullback and then the push up and retest the upper trend line from the recent highs. And that's the critical point. I think um, it's be smart. We'll talk about this more in the M3 Active Trader class tomorrow, which if you're watching this on YouTube or replay, you can learn more about that at moonstream.io slash M3. We'll unpack this a little bit deeper, but essentially, uh, I'll be taking some off the table. I'll be selling some coins just because the high probability of a pullback. And in case we don't break higher on that fifth attempt, we'll, we'll look at it in the charts here in a moment. That's my my concern. So, anyway, um, where will the market wind up? Some people are saying we go down to forty six k. I don't know that that's the case. We're right now holding two trillion dollars on the total market cap, so that's good. And uh, we'll get to the charts here in, in a moment to see that. So that's kind of the TLDR for today. And let's see, uh, some people are commenting on the po potential for 50K. You know, it certainly that's possible. We had some buy limit orders and buy blocks in that range that um, have kind of disappeared now. And so we'll have to see where this lands. And of course, a lot of it's based on you know, the fears of Germany selling Bitcoin. Uh, although I've just, I've just heard something that they've been selling it uh, selling their Bitcoin over the exchanges, but then buying it back OT over the counter, which is strange. Uh, and then, of course, the uh, Mt. Gox Bitcoin specter of that. So, and I've got some articles pulled up for these. We'll get to here shortly. Okay, so uh, what else do we want to talk about here? Let's see. Um, of course, the reimbursements to Mt. Gox. By now, you guys have heard about this. If you haven't, go Google it. I don't want to take too much time, and uh, a lot of the you know, information about that, how much will they distribute? You know, I think a lot of that's probably priced in that the German government selling Bitcoin was not so much priced in, it was a bit of a supply a surprise. And so let's see, saying more downside, probable, uh, you know, it's, um, it just depends. Everything depends on this week and the CPI numbers, you guys. So this may not be really worth unpacking too much more. Let's see. And of course, over on the right-hand side, we can see the German government talking about uh, their $276 million Bitcoin sell-off. Uh, you know what? You guys have heard me say it a thousand times. Show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. We never really know what's going on. So <clears throat> certainly don't trade off of headlines. Uh, these This news has already been disseminated to the big hedge funds, et cetera, and on the news wires, and uh, they're very much on top of it. And so by the, by the time the news comes out, uh, either it's sort of already been priced in to a large degree, you know, when I say news coming out on like Point Telegraph, things like that, uh, you know, there are services where these news wires hit earlier. And all I'm getting at is either it's intentionally sort of placed the media or it's old news. So I would trade what I see and see how the market reacts to the, the news. That's my overall thesis here in trading for the most part. 
All right, so basically this saying we're still in an uptrend. We still are in a macro uptrend, and it would need to go below 38K below uh, to close, so to break that cycle. And so certainly nobody believes that or sees that, but you know, uh, anything's possible. I was, pos I was pontificating last year about a double top, kind of like we saw in 2013. And, um, you know, I, I didn't know why I was feeling that, but certainly we topped out around the old all time high. We could be seeing this kind of playing out. We don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll unpack this as we go. For now, though, that's not the case. Uh, I think that um, it's the same point, Telegraph 45K. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I agree with that. We'll look at this here in a moment. We have our own indicators here, of course, here for Crypto Mastery. And um, if you're seeing this for the first time, you can learn more about our indicators, which are the basis of everything we do here at Moonstream over at moonstream.io and uh, click on the Crypto Mastery tab. Or you can go to cryptomastery.org slash pro to get a look at our pro indicators that are giving us an edge. So look, a lot of this, uh, I don't want to get into on-chain metrics. This is routinely and regularly wrong. Um, you know, it's it's always makes sense in hindsight. This is not timely relevant information for right now. Let's talk about the CPI and the PPI though. This is, uh, this is what I want to get to. So yeah, so basically as Bitcoiners didn't have enough on their minds with all the selling pressure, you know, in the coming days, we have a, a lot of economic data coming up, which I have pulled up over here on Forex Factory. So in terms of this week, now, July 9th, we Fed Chair Powell testifies today. I didn't know that. And essentially, these red folders here are important news events. Everything else is sort of not so much. And um, for example, like these other country PPI and CPIs. But um, so we've got uh, the 11th, we've got Chow Powell testifying, I guess, all week. I didn't know that. Apparently, it's not that important. The PPI and the CPI, uh, CPI rather, Thursday comes out at 1.30 Eastern. Of course, CPI month over month and the year over year, kind of important. So they're pricing in uh, over here on the forecast. You can see 3.1%, all right, and the previous was 3.3%. So they're, you know, they're uh, anticipating a bit of a drop. But it's not about that. It's about if they if the estimates come in above or below, they come in hot or cold. And so um, that's bottom line. This is kind of an ugly page. Then, of course, Friday is PPI. So that's the producer price index. So these are things we don't want to get into it's too much here. We'll talk about it more in the M3 class tomorrow, but that's just on the radar. And as far as what they would be looking for, uh, this is what we're going to chat about here for a minute. So uh, CPI and PPI, as I mentioned, July 11th and 12th, and they're calling a fresh deluge of macro data uh, to test the resolve of risk assets, right? So risk assets, including tech stocks and crypto, especially fare poorly when the economic data is bad. If we're looking at higher interest rates, if we're looking at sort of a hot CPI, PPI numbers. So, um, you know, we'll have to see it's uh, it, it's it's kind of it does make things a lot harder, doesn't it? In all of this trading, because. Trading the charts, having the indicators, all of that tells a story, but uh, we have this sort of economic backdrop right now that's really dictating where the markets and where the money flows are. So really what we want to wait for, what we want to see is liquidity coming back into this market. And it's possible <clears throat> that you know the Fed just needs all the right information and uh, the right nudge to uh, go ahead and do that. And, um, you know, but they keep manipulating the data is the problem. So I don't have much more I want to get into other than we'll see in the charts and see in the indicators how the markets are unpacking this and what's expected and, and what the early clues are. That's really the biggest benefit of these, the signals we have. It kind of shows what the smart money is starting to do before everyone else catches on. Fed's meeting to decide interest rate changes around three weeks from now, um, making the economic data as, imp as important. You know, um, right now they're pricing in an interest rate drop. We're expecting that around 60, 70 percent last I checked in September. Now, there's more people anticipating that, um, you know, we could have a surprise interest rate cut. And um, I, it's interesting. It'd be interesting to see how the markets react to that, because uh, that isn't always a good thing. And certainly a few months after we start dropping interest rates, things start to get uh, usually pulled back. So uh, let's get a little bit farther into this here, the CME gap here. Okay, so this, I should have scrolled down a little bit longer because the last time we showed this, the uh, pricing of this the September dropping the rates here was at like 67%. Wait a minute, hold on a second. No, forgive me, I knew that was wrong. This is July. 
So currently interest rates 5.25 to 5.50. This is where we are. So 93% that they don't change this in July. Okay, above here is referring to, I believe, the upcoming um, uh, the Fed meeting in August, I would, I would believe. We'll pull this up and look at it together. In fact, let me do that so I don't confuse you guys. <clears throat> I was looking at the wrong chart. News and events here, I have all this bookmarked. And so we'll go under the uh, FOMC, the Fed Watch tool. There we go. And so here we'll show you what's being anticipated and what is likely to happen, what's being priced in. So I tell you, what, I'm going to kill the camera. We're pushing a lot of data right now. So this should make it easier for, and hopefully the audio is not cutting out. Again, I'm remote on a Wi-Fi. So for July, 95% now that they remain unchanged. And then September, that's right, there's no August meeting. 68% that they will drop interest rates in September. Um, it's uh, It would be certainly very, very volatile if they were to drop interest rates here in July because it's not, it's not anticipated at all. In uh, November, 50% um, they leave it as is. I'm uh, sorry, 50% uh, yeah, that they leave it as is after the drop in September and then starting to price in another drop. It looks like we're only going to get one drop here in this year. And so, uh, you know, this sort of bell curve could go either way. Uh, the second drop in December. So we'll just have to see how things develop. Okay. All right. Now that we've unpacked that, uh, let's see, coming back in here, center traces bull market gains. Yeah, a lot of this has come back down and the fear and greed index is back to the start of where the Bitcoin bull market was. And one thing that I want to look at tomorrow together in M3 Active Trader is, let's see, I'm going to come all the way down here and we're going to look at the Bitcoin fear and greed index over time. And uh, let's see, there's some chats. Make sure you guys can hear me and everything else. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Alex, we'll get to that soon. Upgrades for sure. Cool. All right, let me get to the questions in a minute. So currently we're at 27 fear and greed, you guys. And um, I guess maybe, you know, I will come back on the camera here for a minute because 27, very, very low on uh, fear and greed. And so this is typically an area we would bounce out of. Last month we were at 75. So we really dropped out and flushed out a lot of the, the greed factor. And so if we come back down to this version of fear and greed, and I'm going to put my, my chat out of the way here, it's really come down as we can see. But let's go to the max. And we can see in this chart that typically when it comes down in these ranges, we see a, a big push out of there where we see uh, you know, markets starting to rally. So we, we can come back lower. I, I, you know, I had forgotten we've seen fear and greed down as low as 10 and even 20. So we can still come down to this 20 level. And let's see, last time we were there was in November of 2022. We hit 10 back in June of 2022, sort of the depths of the bear market, right? So in previous periods of June of 2021 and July. So I, you know, I forget where I read that July was a good month for Bitcoin. I mean, it can be once you start coming out of it, but uh, it usually starts out <clears throat> not, uh, not the best. So this is useful to see, and certainly uh, we are in kind of a downtrend. If we were to draw some tools on this, you can chart this a little bit, but I don't want to get too far down the rabbit hole. All right, so um, so we should be teeing up for some kind of bullish move here, but um, but I just don't. I'm not convinced that it's it's the bottom or the cycle bottom. I think that we do see a cycle bottom later in July, possibly in August. Uh, so we'll just have to see. Let me look at this. Uh, Alex, what did he had a comment here too? So where did the chat go? Uh, <laughs> the chat's disappeared now. Awesome. All right. Well, we'll get back to the questions here in a bit, you guys. So basically, the comment uh, was here. Uh, yeah, and part of my one of my factors for one hundred fifty thousand dollar Bitcoin. These are starting to play out. If you haven't seen that, you can look at that study. Just Google. Uh, overlooked for Brett Fogel and Trading View, and um, I have a study that we've been working on for over a year now. The ten factors that could lead to 150k Bitcoin, and Alex saying a lot more banks are starting to file. Yeah, so with more bank failures, is another indication that the Fed's going to have to come in and inject liquidity to save the banks, and that would go into the economy. You know, it's it, it's more and more rare that they just fire the money printer, 
uh, we had COVID, that was sort of unavoidable. But now at this point, they are starting to pump money or about to start to pump money back to the economy to save the banks since the bank term funding program is over. So uh, Alex saying a lot more banks are starting to file as failures. There's about 346 that filed today. Okay, I did not see that, Alex. Um, <clears throat> thanks. Let's um, uh, let's pull that up. Uh, Perry asking, fear and greed chart would be cool. Is it available on TradingView? They have versions of it. We'll look for that. Uh, you know, I kind of like the one we just showed, uh, but we could pull it up and have a look. Let's get to that. Uh, and here's the fear and greed. Okay, I didn't realize there was here. I wouldn't have gone through all that trouble to pull it up. Sometimes a little, a little bit psychic with these things, you guys. A little ahead of my... Uh, where I'm going. So, um, so this person saying, I hardly think a more bullish sign than this. Well, certainly it would be if we came down to 20 or even 10, but we're getting down into that range where a bounce of some kind is would be warranted. But let me point this out. <clears throat> I'll come back to the real one because, uh, hang on a sec, <clears throat> over here. So basically what happens is it'll retest though. And so if we get a bit of a bounce here, let's look in the past. Let's look back here. If I can zoom in on this. All the way back in here around May 2021, we, we came down to 10 and we bounced up here in June uh, back to 33 and then we dropped again. So the most bullish times are when we sort of bounce around in this low, low area around 10. Because remember, March 2020, how many of you guys were in crypto back then? And then we saw this thing really take off. And uh, all the way up into this 2020 range. And then, of course, it came back down as we got into 2021. Uh, that's interesting because yeah, this was heading down as we got into the summer months. And then we had the big rally going into the end of the year. So I would like to see this come down lower before I go all in. So I do have some powder dry. I'm waiting for that. But, um, you know, I am in the market right now. I'm just looking to um, for a bounce to basically sell some, get get out of that a little bit. All right, so essentially uh, that covers this article. Uh, I'm gonna look for any any news here on the uh, bank failures though, because we wanna watch for that. And I will pull up our chart for those 150K uh, Bitcoin factors because that becomes relevant. But so uh, let's finish this off. German government prepares for the next 276 million Bitcoin sell-off. Something strange is going on here. And you know, you have, um, uh, you want to, you've got, um, I want to say Justin Tan, I, I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm getting a blank. What is his name? The guy, uh, basically he, um, Justin Sun, I don't know why I was saying Justin Tan, Justin Sun uh, from, he's very a prominent Bitcoin trader and, uh, I can't remember the name of his company, but essentially he, um, he was founder of Tron, I believe Tron uh, coin. He was basically trying to negotiate directly with the German government to buy all this Bitcoin so it doesn't keep dumping the price. So he just offered to do that. Now something's happening because I heard that that uh, these wallets are somehow being tracked to being buying Bitcoin OT over the counter after they sell it. I don't know. Don't take me. Don't you know? Quote me on that. But I just heard that. So point is, we very often don't really know what's going on behind the scenes. Let's see. German government moved three thousand Bitcoin worth one hundred seventy-eight million in one hour with more sell-offs looking imminent. So what's the timestamp on this? This was six hours ago. So very likely we've got some uh, Bitcoin selling pressure coming in. And uh, I'm actually over on my iPad here off screen so that uh, I can pull that up while we're doing this. Did see some uh, weakening of the uh, markets earlier this morning. And so I think the people are just anticipating and uh, getting ready for that. Um, but uh, actually a little bit, a little bit of a bounce here on uh, Bitcoin. And so one of my questions is, which we'll get to, okay, we don't have an ERI yet. Uh, we're going to get to that here. Just a moment here. Look at our signals and see what they're telling us. German government continued to Bitcoin sell off after sending roughly 3000, as we just talked about uh, of an hour on uh, July 9th, which is today. And um, <clears throat> yeah, so at the same time, they withdrew from a bit stamp. So it's it sounds like they're moving money around and not necessarily selling it all. So I don't know, you guys. We'll just have to see. This is a picture from Arkham. I can recognize this. So this is how it's being tracked. Their wallet is labeled German government. And you can see that they are both buying and selling, right? So up here, we've got uh, German government 16 minutes ago. And this is three uh, 3,000 Bitcoin. Uh, it would seem, okay, this is the one they referenced. And so basically that uh, this has moved 
uh, this onto an exchange. But whereas down here, the German government was moving back uh, back uh, onto their exchanges. So it's almost the same amount. I don't know. It's 143 million, 22 million. It's, it's strange. And so now they the thing that's scary is they have tw they have twenty six thousand Bitcoin worth one point five billion dollars, and that's significant. So at any point, if they were to dump all of it, that's why people are spooked. If if, big, if Germany were to dump all of it, which they they wouldn't do all in one tranche because it would hurt the price, but still, it's a little bit bit of a concern here because they could at any point maybe their maybe their uh, their goal is to de destabilize the world's financial system. You never know of these things. Okay, so uh, we're getting into the weeds a little bit here. We just see that um, German government's 900 million sell it, suggested selling off the remaining 1.5 billion. So it's possible they will. Uh, and it's also possible other sources are buying this up. Uh, it's gonna be very interesting to see what, uh, why this is. You know, uh, why why they're selling this off. I, I'm sure that will come out on the open some point later. But, um, you know, what do they know that we don't know? And so what we really want to see is other countries accumulating Bitcoin. And uh, I did mention that the other day. There was news that another country, it looked like it was accumulating Bitcoin. And I'm not sure if you've heard this, but there's a, an entity buying 100 uh, Bitcoin per day. Per day, and it's not clear if there's a nation state or an individual. But um, so you know what? Uh, we'll have to see what happens. According to Bitfinex, July sixth and seventh market data evidence is local bottom despite Mt. Gox starting its Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash repayments. All right, we this is old news. We've already talked about that, and of course, Bitcoin touching its lowest at fifty three five. Wow, you guys. So and uh, it briefly it's got back up above 58k which is that range i was anticipating and telling you guys we would go to right now we're at 57 call it 58k it's bounced up so um you know maybe that was like the capitulation set off sort of double testing that 58k range and i do believe that we will see a bounce here as you guys can see on my other chart Let's see uh it's gonna be a little bit trickier to go over to that where is this so okay uh this and this where is it bear with me you guys all right this is where i'll kill the camera a lot of data to get a pull all right so uh, okay good here is this uh the factors for 150k bitcoin i'm going to come back to this we're going to come back and look at the dxy a little bit which is starting to push higher uh the ibit also pushing higher look we've seen some buying coming in so that's interesting and uh, don't judge me. Yes, I was looking at Pepe coin, thought it might have a little rally in it, but it doesn't. So Bitcoin on the four hour here, <clears throat> we see Bitcoin having a nice little bounce. We also have an RSI on our daily in our RSI Pro signaling impossible bottom there. But uh, I want to just double check that we don't have our ERI, our early reversal indicator, and we, we don't have any buy blocks. Remember we had these nice big area of buy blocks, buy orders in this 58K range. And now we don't. Now we don't. The next area, and the reason people are saying 46K is that's where the next level of buy orders are. Okay. So we're going to get to this, but where I think we go is we push up here into this 66K range, and then we come back down a bit. And then we either, we either reject completely at 66K and go lower, or we might push up again to that upper range where we uh, had tried and attempted all new all time highs before. And so I've got all these charts saved on my other machine, but we can redraw this easy, easily here with a simple trend line, as you guys can see there. So basically, this is going to be a strong area. 69K, guys, if we do push up to 69K, I would be, I'm going to be selling and probably front running that around 66k because as this bollinger band comes down this is going to be a strong area of resistance and you know we might see all the shorts pile in with leveraged shorts okay we, by now we know this how this game is played so the shorts let's just let's just pontificate for a minute what would be likely to happen you know the sellers are kind of exhausted let's say we push up here and we hit this area, strong rejection, come back down, maybe try another attempt up in this range. But if we can't break through there, we got trouble. 
I'm not going to lie, this would be bad. And we're going to have to watch very carefully to see what happens. If this rejects up here, that will be the fifth attempt at a new high. So one and two and three, four, five. These usually break higher on the third or fifth attempt. If we reject here, we're going lower. And it's it's probably going to be a nasty sell-off, maybe down to 46K. I don't know. I can't predict the future. But uh, we've been somewhat prophetic in these drawings. Now, the best case scenario is that we, you know, certainly, <clears throat> so again, this is the fifth attempt. Now, let's say that this happens on another, let's say we get up here and we go through this area and it flips as support. Then we might have the strength to go up above and then retest that. And then we are good to go. But we've got to clear this upper level. And the thing is, <clears throat> there's just not, we don't know where the money is going to come from, right? So, so these are the scenarios. But because the the money is sort of flowing out, we don't uh, we don't have a risk favorable market. The liquidity printing, the money printing, has to come in some forms, and maybe as Alex was suggesting, it comes in the form of bank bailouts. So we will get back to the news, but I think it's relevant. Uh, and let's come, let's get in here to talk about that. Thank you, Alex, for that uh, bit of news because. Uh, I'm going to come back on camera here. So, uh, so basically, we've got a couple scenarios here. Now, just for the hell of it, I was starting to add in oops, the negative factors, you know, that we might not get to a new cycle high. Might as well start there quickly. First ever glo uh, global macro recession for Bitcoin. Uh, I see a question coming in. I'll get to your question. Um, you know, the global recession for Bitcoin, it, it, it's never, Bitcoin's never been through a recession. A lot of talk out there about recessionary fears. And the typically recessions begin, it's like 12 months after they started raising rates. It's a very delayed uh, process. So, you know, Bitcoin's never been through a global recession. Okay, we have to weigh that in. These are some of the negative factors over on the left. Also, we might not get the QE money printing. You know, we might, which over on the right side, and then these little check marks aren't aligned because I've got to get, there we go. <clears throat> Uh, you know, we've got to see some liquidity back in these markets. Is the money printer going to start to go burr or are they going to just pump money in to save the banks? Uh, it, either way, we need something. If they don't, if they say, you know what, we can't, we're, our, our debt is just too high. Guys, we've got to like bite the bullet. There's going to be no money printing. There's going to be no QE right now. Um, you know, again, we're getting to the right side. I'm not saying this happens. Uh, and then the next one, the BTFP, that was the bank term funding program, runs out of money, causes a market sellout. Now, that did not happen. Uh, they, it's not that they ran out of money. They just didn't continue it. But now we're, we're hearing that there's some banks that are in trouble. Alex, if you can send me a link or drop a link to an article about that, that would save me some time and share it with everybody. Also, escalation of international wars and war fears. You know, look, we, we've kind of become complacent with conflicts over in Europe with Ukraine and um, Middle East. But, um, you know, these tensions are still smoldering. They have not gone away. And it's a tinderbox. Uh, any, uh, anything could escalate that. And there may be other conflicts around the world that are also brewing like China and Taiwan. Um, let's be honest, in a recession, competition for resources causes conflict. And, um, and that's kind of behind it. So that is behind it. Let's see, Perry, I see you're raising your hand. Uh, it says my screen sharing is paused. Oh, hang on a second. That might be what you're... I apologize, you guys. Let me do that over. Uh, it was a different Chrome setting. I'm going to just have to do it this way. Can you guys see this now? Sorry about that, you guys. Yeah, running from the laptop here. So back here to Bitcoin, since you guys couldn't see that, here's the chart. Talked about this. If we push up in this range, I'm going to delete that one as scenario A. We push up here, reject, see all the sell orders at 66K, and then possibly push up here to this area where a rejection could happen. <clears throat> and the other version, though, is this one where we push through the 66K sell orders, retest it as support, use that as a launch pad to come up and then retest and go. Um, but we need the catalyst for that. And then what I did is I jumped over to this chart. Okay. Sorry, guys, you couldn't see that. Let me get, I'll just review that visually and go full screen. This It should work this time. Uh, and there. 
okay? But don't worry about the charts down below just yet. Negative factors, macro recession, QE money printing, BTFP, escalation of wars on the left side. Uh, over on the right-hand side, let's talk about the paths to 150K Bitcoin. Now, this is review for most of you, and so I'll go quickly. Number one, BlackRock, Fidelity, ETC, money flow into Bitcoin. Yes, we got that. Check. BTFP ending, bank failures pushes money to Bitcoin. Big question mark. All right. And uh, while well, Alex is digging up that uh, link, um, we'll keep going. Number three. That was number three. So, no, number three, QE money printing to pay down the U.S. debt. We're going to see some of that going into election cycle. You want to be looking at September, October, November for the bigger moves in crypto markets and because they're going to prop up the economy somehow. Uh, but the other question mark, de-dollarization and hyperinflation, the BRIC stations just basically uh, finalized their deal and uh, they are going full steam ahead away from the U.S. dollar. More supply of dollars, less demand. Hyperinflation has a potentially uh, could could affect that, and a flight to quality into Bitcoin. So we'll see. That's still playing out. Corporate accumulation, microstrategy, still buying uh, Apple, Tesla, other companies starting to. I did just hear of another company saying uh, it was a Japanese company, and uh, it's not SoftBank, but one of these. Um, well, that's more country based, but another U.S. company moving their balance sheet assets over onto Bitcoin. And uh, if we have time, I'll touch on a very interesting video I was watching this morning by an economist uh, that really about why it's so important that essentially his argument is the fiat money system is designed to perpetually make it worse and stealing our money. Now, before you put on your tin hat, his argument was very strong in that the more we try to ex ex excel in that kind of environment, the more we're hurting the overall uh, system that is designed to to inflate because he said deflationary over time and during progress deflation is normal and the the only the counter the only way the system can survive is to always inflate uh, I'll drop a link to that I'm only halfway through it but it's a really interesting interview uh, so I don't want to get too far off topic there. But basically, we're waiting for, you know, country adoption as Bitcoin as reserve currency. That's going to likely start to happen more as it strengthens. I think these countries are starting to wait and see. Germany not helping. You know, that they have to be looking at Germany saying, why are they selling all their Bitcoin? We also have post having reduced minor selling. So there be less selling pressure. You know, fortunately, Germany waited till after the halving when there is going to be a sensibly less selling because the miners can only mine half as much. Uh, so less, also less available exchange supply, less is, uh, creates a demand surge is number eight. Number nine, uh, political support in favor of Bitcoin. We're starting to see that with the administration starting to say they will support Bitcoin, at least one of them, one of them flip flops. And again, the uh, number 10, global fiat debt bubble and a commercial real estate crash. Hearing more and more rumblings about the commercial real estate market, which I've been saying for over a year now, that shoe never dropped, you guys. So uh, we we are heading into, we've got some strong headwinds as we sail off into the future, you guys. So we'll have to see, have to see how strong that uh, our sail is behind us. All right. And um, here's the charts. I didn't want to get into this. This is, so I guess it's worth noting, let's cover this because we haven't talked about it in a while. This chart here, uh, overlay of the last cycle pattern this blue chart over here was this last cycle and it is no longer overlaying. We have deviated significantly from this. So, you know, this part of the study is, uh, has been sort of invalidated, right? We have, we have now rejected over here as a triple top and once, twice, you know, if we call this all one top, this is, you know, this is not a bullish sign. And so we have to see what happens. Uh, one thing that I want to do, if we want to see what, what else possible, you know, we had our Fibonacci's on there for the projections on the upside. If we were to go over here, let's say that that was the top and ignore this other Fib study, I want to see on a 50% retracement, um, we already uh, hit that. No, we haven't hit that. That would put us at 47, 48K, and a 618 retracement would put us back to around 38K, which obviously we don't want to see. 
But it's this trend line here that is so important, this one right back there that has contained prices all the way back. Hang on. Ay, ay, ay. This is the trading view glitch that at some point I need to get them on the phone to, to fix that. Get rid of this and get rid of this. Okay. Uh, point is, I want to show you this chart, this trend line all the way back. Okay. Trying to move my video camera out of the way. So basically, it uh, goes all the way back here to this area, which was July of 2017, before the big rally up, right? So this was pivot one, and then we had this, and then we had the COVID crash, and then we had <clears throat> our market cycle low. So guys, I don't want to, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but if we were to come back down to 30, this range, let's say 618, maybe it takes a while, if it came back down to 38K, uh, that would be the time to buy. But, um, you know, there's so many varying, I just got a video or a headline come up, uh, I'm not going to have time to play it, it just says, the biggest bull run in history is coming. <laughs> so, well, show me the money and let's see it. So uh, we haven't seen this so can start to take off here. Uh, but that being said, uh, let me put this back as I had it. Okay. Yeah. All right. That being said, we usually have a, a secondary, a different trend. Um, sorry, guys. It's hard to talk and draw and do all these things at the same time. Here, hang on a second. We usually have a different trend line slope when we get into these bull markets. So, so we've got potentially you know, a couple of these playing out. So I'll leave that on here. We'll come back to it next week, you guys. I want to get back to uh, what we were talking about here before and there. So I'll save this. Let's get back over to the news. And let's see. Alex, did you find that article for me? Yeah, probably did. Let's see. Some comments here. Fear and greed. Sure. Up channel 22. Not even close to the bullish again. There he says, how much impact can 276 million to overall market cap? Yeah, I mean, 276 million on the overall Bitcoin market cap. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, it's 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 not it's a blip on the radar. Exactly. So El Salvador could be buying from Germany. Yeah, I mean, they don't have that much money. And let's see. Uh, Perry, I can't check the um, chat here on, on a single monitor easily. So my apologies. I'm trying to keep this on here, but it's it's in the way of my what I what I'm drawing for you guys. Uh, okay, nobody found the link for me. So we'll dig around here and try to find it. Bitcoin ETF investors buy the dip, inflows at 295 million. So that's interesting. Let's look over at our IBIT chart. And uh, so we're seeing on the four hour, we're seeing a bit of a bounce here. So we see money flowing in on the IBIT. So the, you know, let's, let's say the ETFs come to the rescue. We have our, here's a good segue into the crypto mastery indicators because our core Indicators, you know, usually an ERI, which we don't have, but we do have a bounce off the lower trend channel. And we have our TSI going green and above 20. This is very bullish. And we had our RSI go green, showing bullish divergence. So it's a little bit flatlined actually on the divergence, but it's still showing a green circle. And these are often pivot points. So we're seeing uh, the ETFs buying money, maybe they're buying up Germany's uh, outflows. Uh, let's see, notch their biggest day of inflows in over a month and might amid a slump. So the ETFs are buying, you guys. That's good. All right. Uh, all right. ETF, significant daily inflow in BlackRock, Fidel followed by Fidelity. No surprise there. Uh, Grayscale, trust, rare day of pro positive price action. Okay, that's interesting. Well, maybe that means the selling pressure from Grayscale has uh, eased. So that's actually good. And this is a bit much to see here. I could look, we'll look at that tomorrow and look, pull up, hey, Apollo, for the actual inflows and outflows. If you guys remind me, let's see, Bitcoin sell off, put ETF shares in a discount rack. German government, 1.5, we already talked about this. And I think we've unpacked this. All right, Australia to get a second spot ETF. No, all right, cool. Labor victory, UK, don't want to talk about that, but unless it renews crypto industry optimism. <clears throat> all right. Well, this is good for the reason that we just talked about. If we have a more favorable countrywide 
adoption of Bitcoin. So I uh, will hop back over to here and number, which one is it? Country adoption of Bitcoin as reserve currency, number six. Big question mark there, you know, is it's on the way. As Victor Hugo said, you cannot stop any an idea whose time has come. This is, you know, the ship is heading in that direction. It's a slow moving battleship, but it's going to get there. So this is good news. Because Liz, once once the UK and some other big countries start to tip over, and it becomes the new normal, then that's when the mass adoption starts to happen. Okay, so uh, this was big news. A um, lot of turmoil in the world, right? Look over in France, they're having a huge election overthrow issues and riots. The U UK in landslide victory for the Labour Party. Fourteen years of Conservative Party government. That's a big deal, you guys. And so what this says, re renewed optimism for positive action and engagement with the cryptocurrency industry. So outgoing prime minister, whatever that name is, made, a, uh, made much of his crypto asset hub ambitions, but industry observers said action to back the were lacking. So he's out. And the new guy, renewed interest. Uh, okay, that's TLDR. There we go. All right. What have they said about crypto? Just mention some mention spotlight. That's it. Power change. That's enough. We don't need to go through that all. But uh, lastly, that's the forex calendar. Okay, we're good. Fear and greed is cool. We're, we're good with the news. Actually, let me just say this. We we're gonna look at uh, what now we have. What did we just say, uh, Alex? What was that article? I, I totally drew a blank here. You guys were gonna look it up for me, but um, I forgot what it, what it was. So all right, we'll move on, you guys. <clears throat> And um, so let's look at some coins. See any questions here? Yeah, Perry's saying the US presidential elections, yeah, of course they'll play into everything. The, on the 150K list, it, it, it's, it's not specifically, it's a fair comment. You know, um, let's see where we can squeeze it in. Because, uh, you know, I hear on the QE money printing, that's part of where it is to pay down the U.S. debt. And the reason for, you know, we have an election cycle uh, is built into that. So let's see. QE. Let's do this. QEMP. Oops. And let's see. We'll just stack to know that means money. QEM printing. How about that? To pay down U.S. debt elections. So we'll know what that means. We're squeezing as much in here as we can. And of course, we have number nine is political support in favor. But but specifically, is what you're saying, and I'm saying here too, is the elections, they're going to try to prop up the economy uh, going into the election cycle because, look, they both lie. They lie their faces off. And they're going to come in and say it's the greatest economy ever, uh, which it isn't. But um, fortunately, we all see through that. But uh, basically, uh, that's the deal. And they will uh, start uh, start to do that for sure. Okay, where did the chat go? Come on. And, and it's gone. You guys ever seen that South Park where I think is uh, <laughs> the main guy goes into the bank to deposit money for trading and the guy is like, all right, let's put it into your account and it's gone. <laughs> kind of feels like crypto. Um, yeah. Gotcha. South Park. Yeah, there you go, Barry. Um, any direct responses to the investors buying the ETF shares? What do you, let's see, I was trying to do the ETFs have a choice of buying when the act, yeah, that's a good question. We don't know if they have a choice. You know, I, it's worth digging in deeper. The question is, do ETFs have the choice of buying and selling actual Bitcoin when they want, or are they directly, you know, when the money flows in, does it automatically buy at the market? And uh, I, I'm going to stipulate to you that it's it's not just automatic buying. And um, I, the ETFs likely are also playing the derivative side of this and, uh, and, and hedging themselves. But I would I would say that uh, especially the bigger ones like Bitcoin or BlackRock and Fidelity, uh, if a whole bunch of funds came in and they felt prices were going lower, they could hold that. Um, it's it's also it's little known, but on the exchanges, the bigger exchanges, there's A books and B books. So if you come in with a large account, they'll ask you, do you want to be on the A book 
or the B book. And I won't go into all the details there, but essentially they can kind of hold money and funds for when it behooves them to deploy it. And, um, you know, they're not necessarily directly trading against you, although, although these AI market makers, uh, at least on the leverage overseas exchanges, I think I have empirical evidence that they do because there's no regulation. And so, you know, with these regulated markets like the ETFs, that's a good question, but we just really can't get that far down the rabbit hole because it's not something we can control. So understanding is sort of a moot point. Uh, so again, show me the charts. That tells us what we need to know. And we want to buy momentum. We want to trade what we see. So back to uh, Bitcoin here in a bullish RSI. Uh, that's not quite enough. You know, I would love to see our TSI go green in about 20. And start seeing ERI. Now let's look at the weekly though. This is what we really should be paying attention to. And because... So here's the thing, you guys, uh, when the daily weekly align, we see powerful moves. And I'm starting to I like what I see here. So if we look back in time, back here, which was right around September of 2023, we had a weekly bullish early reversal indicator. Okay. And we had the trend strength indicator going above 20. This was an ideal time to buy. We had a bullish engulfing candle. So these are the signals that we are waiting for. And of course, we had an RSI down here. This is our four horsemen, ERI, TSI, RSI. You know, and our signal line is in here somewhere. But these are the big ones, the three kings, the new, the new three kings. We had, it used to be ERI, TSI signal, I think it was. And then we have the trend indicator, of course. Uh, I don't want to throw too much at you if you're new. But uh, those of you who have the indicators, you know. And also, this is how, on the weekly time frame, we called this. I, I told you guys, well, I, w I was curiously saying that I think we're going lower, in all fairness. I wasn't sure, but this is the same setup we saw as back on the, the market cycle top. Exactly the same. So this is and, and has been, I've been telling you guys, these signals, when they align, we need to be ready to get out of the markets, whether it's now or whether it's at 100K or 150K or whatever. When we have a bearish weekly ERI, red arrow, bearish engulfing pattern, bearish TSI, and a bearish RSI, we are out. We get out. That's it. No debate. If I kept anything, it would be 10% if, if that. And we continue to see how well these indicators call these markets. So ERI, bearish engulfing, we had the TSI come down sideways, just kind of dropped below. It was a little bit un un unusual. And we got our we got this late on the Bitcoin, but the total market cap, the RSI was earlier. We had, that's what we watch. Um, so anyway, I'm getting uh, away from my point. My point is here, TSI, ERI, uh, RSI, bullish. What do we see here? We If we see a um, early reversal indicator, that's our green arrow. Again, there's an oscillator version of it that shows you the why and how it works and why I believe it shows institutional money buying and programmatic buying. And then the trend strength indicator going back above here, going green. So what, what should we do? We can set alerts on these, as we know. So let's do add alert. And we want to say crossing up above 20, right? And that I want to know once per bar close. I always want to know every time it happens when the TSI, let me do this differently, UTC, I do recommend you relabel your indicators so that it's clear when they fire. So Bitcoin TSI weekly above 20 buy. And, you know, sometimes I'll do exclamation points. Sometimes I'll do question marks to reevaluate it. But for me, this is almost this is almost a, it's a 90 percenter when the TSI goes green above 20. Look what happened back here. Nice little rally. Nice little rally. The more that align, the stronger the rally. So I want to be watching very carefully so that if we get here a T ERI and the TSI goes green and the RSI goes green uh, all in. <clears throat> you know, within reason, I, you know that. But for the most part, I'll be very, very likely to go all in. All right.
Perry says, I wonder what the buy-sell order blocks looked like back in the 2022 bear market downtrend. Yeah, um, no way to know that, Perry, because they, they disappear once they fall off the chart. Um, let's, but here, let's, on the total market cap, that's why I do screenshots of these sometimes, just so that we know what it looked, looked like. And where, there, bear with me. So we are on the weekly time frame. And so here's what it looked like um, a couple of weeks ago. And it was, it was, uh, let's see how it played out. We had strong sell order blocks at 3 trillion. And then between this two and a half to 2.8. Okay. So the top ones are gone. The ones we still see are at this 2.5 to 2.8. So these are still there. And so there's still sell pressure up ahead. That's the equivalent of 66K Bitcoin. Pardon me. And But uh, what I want to point out to you, though, here is, you know, back in here, we had that ERI weekly and the RSI printing. And we were already down below on the TSI. So we that's, you know, we were right. This is, this is how I made that call, you guys. And this is why the indicators are so valuable. It takes all the emotion out of these. And so, again, if you want to find these, you can find these at cryptomastery.org slash pro. Uh, we have we, the, the lifetime offer expired July last week, but we haven't had time to take it down. Uh, and so if you're seeing this, that price is going to go higher. We've just been too busy and half the team has been under the weather. So you can still sneak in and get these, but you have to go over there and do it fast because uh, that lifetime offer is going to go up soon. All right, so basically learn all about that here. Go to this page, learn about the indicators. There's a half an hour video training right up top. It tells you everything you need to know and why you need these indicators. And many of you already have them. So let's jump back over to total market cap. Now, here's the thing. We are touching one of the other indicators here that we do love on our pro pack is this modified Bollinger Band. So watch when these come down and touch the lower Bollinger Band, which it is. And ideally, we would have it touch or go below it because that's when we see rallies off of that and typically up to the upper Bollinger Band and up into this 60 or this $2.6 trillion range. Guys, you know, we have sort of the cheat code. This tells me everything I need to know. Likely, we rally out of here in the total market cap up to $2.5 trillion, And then I'll think it's, I think we roll over. <clears throat> what scares me, concerns me, is that we don't have heavy buy blocks, all the way down to a trillion. Can you imagine if we lose half of the total market cap, realizing that most of it's made up of Bitcoin? Uh, I don't want to scare everybody, but, um, you know, we, we don't see a lot of, we don't see any buy orders really very, very thin uh, on the total market cap, excluding Bitcoin. So the alts, if we were to see that and start losing this, the alts are going to get murdered. I I don't I don't say that uh, I say that with a heavy heavy heart. I guess um, if that happens, um, so total market cap excluding Bitcoin and ETH, what if it got cut in half? That means all the alts, which are already down 80, 90, 80 percent, 70, 60, 78 percent, it could be cut in half again. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. You guys, uh, we're going to talk more about this in M3 with my specific strategy, what we want to do to preserve capital tomorrow. And uh, again, if you are not already in M3, we're going to be doing a um, Friday, I believe, a uh, free training on that, <clears throat> about that service. And uh, why is this <laughs> verifying I'm human? All right, this is probably VPN related, uh, but you can learn more about everything we do at moonstream.io and uh, from our newsletter to our my active trader class, and of course our indicators, but that is at moonstream.io slash M3. And you can learn all about that. Daily access to me where I do updates in the private signal group, Q&A, weekly Wednesday classes with a little bit more detail. We go into pointing picks, et cetera, and all these other bonuses. All right, so check that out. Yes, I do trade. Uh, anyway. <clears throat> So that's moonstream.io slash M3. So we'll cover that more detail tomorrow. Where was I? And sorry, guys, where is it? Here. Cover that. DXY bouncing up a little bit. Uh, yeah, you know, that's been acting 
very oddly. I have to redraw this. And the BXY is starting to push higher again. We really want to see that break down again and going down a big point rally zone. So it's something sticky on the on the dollar happening there. <clears throat> but um, you know, th that could be related to it doesn't mean the dollar's strong. It means that the dollar is strong in relation to the other currencies which are starting to uh to money print because their economies are in trouble. So uh let's see what does it say external part okay, never mind. So basically what I'm seeing here though is we do get a bounce. What I'm suggesting is uh, that um, if we push up in this range, it would be a place to start getting out for another downturn. I don't know. I, I think that's the smart play because unless everything starts to line up and we get our TSI green, which will probably happen first, then we'll push up into this range. But I think this two and a half trillion to 2.65 trillion is going to be really tough to get through. And we'll have a deeper drop. We can see a deeper drop down in this up and down and then higher later. They're going to bleed this market out if they can, everybody. And so, uh, but as of now, Bitcoin's up a thousand total market cap, still holding that $2 trillion level. So that's good. Uh, let's see. Let's jump over into our crypto mastery list. If you guys have anything you want me to look at, we can. We can look at some hot movers and then we will call it a day. <clears throat> but here's the thing, you guys. I, I don't want to recommend anything, any buy orders whatsoever until we have CPI out. <laughs> Pardon me. Because <clears throat> that can, uh, you know, that's going to certainly affect this market. And as Bitcoin goes, uh, everything else follows. We know that. So Ethereum, uh, I talked about this yesterday in M3. Uh, below 2,800, I would have my stop loss here, as you can see. Uh, and what do I have? I have it as a buy order. Might have to adjust that. Um, I, you, the reason I had this as a buy is because it had a buy block there. Uh, I'm deleting that alert because here's why, and it's okay to change your mind. New information equals new decision. We have a support zone right here. If we lose this and we lose the support zone, we're likely to head down at least this 2,500 on the lower Bollinger Band. Uh, I don't actually have ETH right now, but um, that would be my play and wait for our signals to start to align on the upside. Let's take a look at Solana, which I do have this in full disclosure, same look and chart. Look at this though, we see some of this turning around on the TSI. Uh, this is where I do recommend you're setting your alerts. This is on a weekly time frame, by the way. We'll go back to the daily here in a moment. But the weekly, uh, the weekly time frames, when they start to go bullish, they're gonna stay there on a longer time frame, they'll have more follow through. So I do like the fact that we have a bullish RSI and we're about to go green on the uh, trend strength indicators and the Bollinger Bands are tightening. So we just need Solana, we need ETH to kind of hold here. This would play into the narrative that we do get a bounce on Bitcoin for a, for a short term, a short time. Uh, I don't feel this is the bottom, you guys. I don't think this is the pivot. Let me see if you guys have any comments here. And, um, you know, let's see, I'll get to that. See, buy sell blocks 2022, baby fresh. Yeah. So Perry says, I wonder how the loss of USD as a world reserve currency plays into everything too. True. I doubt bricks are pro crypto. Um, you know, I, I, they were, they were backing it with gold, but then I heard they were kind of moving over to retort crypto, which would make sense because Russia and China have a lot of Bitcoin. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. They that they'll we'll see how that plays out and what the U.S. will do to keep our reserve currency, because that's really important. Um, I've heard varying uh, varying opinions on this, but if you haven't seen Ray Dalio's video on Netflix called "A Changing World Order" or "A New World Order," one of those two, really outlines how every major power and world currency of the past, once they lost reserve currency status, you know, the Dutch, the English. You know, then their economies, they were no longer the leading economy in the world. <clears throat> and we will fight tooth and nail to keep that, of course. And so, yeah, I don't know. Interesting times, you guys. I don't know that the AIs can even figure this out. <clears throat> um, or maybe they're behind it. At this point, we don't know. And so, let's see. Uh, hot movers. These are some from previous weeks. I'll take them out. Of, there are no hot movers at the moment. 
Uh, let's see. We'll look at look at Metis, Avax. I don't see anything really looking good. INJ and near uh, near protocol. Lots of of cell pressure up ahead. Let's see. I I'm sorry. Let me go back to the daily on these. Uh, lots of cell pressure on these overhead on the dailies. I'll go back to ETH just to retouch on that. Okay, same story. Fortunately, with Solana, a lot of buy pressure in, in between. And uh, we'll be watching for more signals to light up. But really, this is just in the sideways consolidation pattern and may be there for a while. Let's see, INJ, uh, let's see, up a little bit. SETI is up. Okay. Well, uh, you know, I'm, I'm tempted to say this looks like a pretty good buy, but it isn't enough. We don't have the early reversal indicator. We don't we do have TSI above 20, but it just feels a little weak to me. I'm, I'm very low volume, so that's being moved around with that. Let's see, Strax here. Starting, these, some of these are starting to look good, but it's this overall overarching macroeconomic and this this unknown about the CPI that I just I would not be buying anything here, at least not a lot of it. Some of these are starting to look tempting. What I would do with IMX though, look at this nice little sweet spot on Immutable X at a dollar. Play the asymmetric trade here. If this thing were to dump down to a dollar, it would get bought up in a heartbeat. Uh, my recommendation, not to give financial advice, but this would be a good play. Uh, that round number of dollars, you know, great place to look at buying and DCA by, if you like, the uh, gaming sector. Of course, Immutable X, one of the strongest ones. And I'll put a question mark there, say, all right, go reevaluate this. But uh, that's how I would play it. It's still in a downtrend. Uh, it's bouncing a little bit, but if you could buy some right at a dollar or even even 96 cents, I think a dollar, it it'll be front run this. People will front run it. So uh, that to me looks pretty good, you know, uh, all right, well, well, let's see what I may do is switch over to any hot movers, but I don't want to have anything on your radar as a buy because of this uncertainty with what's coming up. Some things are starting to recover, but hitting cell blocks like Eagle, uh, Pepe was looking interesting last night, yesterday, and I was in a leverage long on Pepe because... This looked like a nice little uh, candle here, potentially a rocket sold off at the end of the day, overnight kind of weakened quite a bit here. And I closed my leverage long. I was up, I was up nicely on this last night and sold it at a small loss just because, you know, this thing trying to hold this trend line, but unless my signals align, I'm not gonna do it. And we do have an RSI on this, but uh, not happening. All right, it's anything you guys wanna look at, let me know, we've got blur. And not a whole lot of anything going on, you guys. Let me do this. I'll pull up the hot movers. So trading you. There we go. Check the chat. Uh, overall heat map. Yeah, we we could we can look at that. The the yeah, they're gonna look green. It's kind of like a dead cat bounce. Now let's see. Mobile may have another quick pump and dump and play. All right, we'll check that out. Uh, Perry says all those crypto miners that moved their rigs out of China to Texas just in time <laughs> for the loss of U.S. reserve currency. And uh, yeah, Alex, sounds like a country is going to need some democracy uh, war in parentheses soon. Uh, and um, yeah, that I mean, look, that's I, I said that a year ago when all of this recessionary talk was on the horizon. I'm like, all right, looks like we're going to see some wars around the world because Competition for resources, that's the way they boost their economy and uh, and what happens. Now, why did this not pull up here? Hot Movers, Crypto Trading View, thought that we pulled this up here. Top gainers today, Crypto Gainers, there we go. And uh, what else do you guys want to look at here? My, my issue with this is, is move that out of the way, move this out of the way. 55% on DOC. I mean, these are ones you're going to get. If you start buying these after they've run so far, uh, This is these are where you're going to get hurt. Let's take a look at one of we know. Here's Covalent. This is in the um, uh, the RWA. I think it's, uh, this is a deep in project, I believe. 
and I'm familiar with Covalent. So let's see what they're up to today. Okay, well, I mean, uh, this is an interesting chart. I do like to look for strength when everything else is weak, you know, and sort of draw these trend lines here, sort of putting in lower lows, but kind of a, a janky little wedge breakout here. We got, look at that. It's in our ERI Pro showing money flow coming in. So you know, we certainly have found some great trades using this top gainers in the past. So uh, what do we see here, you guys? Anybody? We have, what do we have? We have an early reversal indicator yesterday and the money flow block on the ERI Pro. Very powerful. That shows institutional larger buyers coming in. We have a TSI going green. We have an RSI that was green over here. And for extra credit, for those of you that have the ERI Pro, what does this vertical shaded green line mean? It's showing on the RSI right here. And it's showing on the TSI right here. All right. Who's going to get it? Okay, so so nobody's got it yet. What that means is, and the reason Joe Joe's been such a genius in this is, we have of course our regular trend indicator that uh, we don't need to have on the chart because some of the, some people in trading view you're limited to how many indicators you can have, and so what Joe's done and the genius of our indicators is most of them are like three indicators in one. So uh, <clears throat> what you would not need to do. Uh, where is it? Trend indicator, trend pro. So you wouldn't need to have it on the chart because this vertical green line shows where there's a bell. See this? And a bell is, of course, our buy signal on our trend indicator. That's kind of that longer term because when we see a trend indicator go with the key in a bell, let's look back in time. When we see a red line in the middle, that means no trend. When it starts turning to green and we see a key, the key says, hey, we might be getting a bell. A bell is the buy, and then we usually take profits up here at the bag of money. And so this, to me, this looks much stronger because of this deep down uh, downtrend. The trend indicator works best after a lengthened sell-off and starting to turn red to green. So this looks really good to me, you guys. And it's a little bit hard to find. It's on the crypto dot com exchange it's also on, on kraken so there you go it's on it's on mexc so that's good let me do this uh since we are i always recommend that you um uh, look at it on the exchange you want to trade it on make sure the, the signals are aligned there as well good so i'm going to add this to our coin uh, our watch list here and uh, i already have it and i'll put it in speculative dgen i'm going to put it in deep in I'm going to put it in our M3 Active Trader and our Crypto Mastery list. And I'm going to put it on my, my list because I, I think this looks pretty good. So um, let's unpack this a little bit. How's the weekly trend look? Or the weekly signals? Still oversold bullet. Look at this, you guys. We may have a winner for you and one to watch. That's why I do like the hot movers on, on uh, trade, trading view. So we have a bullish engulfing candle. We have a bullish ERI. It's it's suspect there, but it's close enough. Coming out of a buy zone, covalent, and uh, if we were to get some, the, if we were to get back to the old high, and that upper Bollinger band, let's let's kind of gauge this. Sorry, I got I got to move the chat window. Right, there we go. If we were to buy it here, and it goes to the top. It's potentially 170 uh, percent. That's a 17. That's 1.7 x. It's almost a double. Beats a sharp stick in the eye, you guys. What do we want to do now? What I would do now is I would come in here and hang on. Under our TSI, set an alert when we get above 20. Crossing up. <clears throat> 20. And then I'll rename this and say TSI. Uh, usually the symbol first. So covalent, what is it? CQT? Uh, I can't remember. What is it? CQT. Yeah, CQT TSI weekly over 20. You can abbreviate like this, just say bye. 
I like that. So our, I want to be clear, our crypto mastery indicators are much stronger on the weekly timeframes, but most powerful when they align with the daily and the weekly, which is happening. So you know what, you guys, we're, we're amidst all this doom and gloom, this is an ideal setup that um, we will probably look back on, say, shoulda, coulda, woulda. I would say, not financial advice, this looks like a pretty good buy to me here. Uh, it's hitting some resistance on the upper Bollinger Band. Now, again, we use a modified Bollinger Band. This is different than the ones you use for free on TradingView. If you're using the free Bollinger Band, it's not going to work. It's not going to work for crypto. You can see ours perfectly. I was going to say almost perfectly, but it is. It perfectly captures the uh, extremes on this. When it hits and breaks that red Bollinger Band, it sells off. It sells off. It sells off. When it touches down on the green ones, now it'll act, the mar overall market direction is going to dictate what happens, but it's sort of slowed down. Now we have a bullish ERI, and it's starting to bounce off that lower Bollinger Band. You see that, you guys? That's why these indicators are so important. Over here, we get this vertical red line. When it closes above the upper Bollinger Band, sure enough, sold off. People ask me all the time, where do I take profits? And that's one of my, my top answers, you guys. All right. Um, so I'm also going to set an alert here when it gets above 20 cents, just to say, hey, you know what? This thing's showing continued signs of strength. And it put a zero in front of that, 0 0.20. And uh, yeah, so CQT is now very much on my watch list. And it's on MEXC. So that is an exchange that I use. You can use it with a VPN. And um, you can also find it on Kraken. So there you go, everybody. Possible long candidate. Now, again, beware of the CQT. Uh, Perry asking how the radar looks. Good question, Perry. Let's look at the radar on the uh, chart on CQT. And the radar, of course, is our multi time frame radar. It gives an overall look at how this is looking on the um, different time frames that you have set. Let's see, where is the radar here? And radar screener 1.0. Okay, so it is mostly red on the radar, but if we want to catch the ideal turnaround, if let's say this is the beginning and this starts with the daily, then next week it says green on the daily, then the monthly, then the quarterly, then we would have nailed this entry. So, so that brings up an interesting question for you guys. So at this point, say, all right, well, let's say this is a risk, uh, risk reduced trade. Let's say you don't want to take that trade, you buy here. And oops. We want to always monitor risk. So let's say we believe it'll go all the way up here. So it's 50 cents, let's say, or 45 cents. Okay, so here, but I'd say, look, just to be safe, let's say right in the middle of that sell block is our target. And I'm going to just be a little more conservative and say here, because why is that? It This was a sell uh, sort of sell zone in here. So let's just say this is where our target is. And our stop loss, we put right below this level here. Unfortunately, though, this doesn't meet our criteria for an ideal trade. We want to see at least a three to one risk reward ratio. So there's two things we can do. We can lower our stop, which is fine. I would say here and raise our, you know, I'd say the midpoint of these cell blocks is usually working. So it, it's only a 3.6, but let's say we sold half of the position there or we sold out our initial investment and then we raised our target up so this one to sell a little bit more. Now we're at a five <clears throat> risk reward ratio and a potential 200%, 1.7X, if it goes all the way up here. But you know, I mean, this is a good, right now I recommend base hits. And if you target at 30 cents up in here, let's just say that would be 70%. I, that's, you know, despite not being a great risk reward ratio, it's a worthy trade because it's pretty likely it'll go up to 30 cents based on what I'm seeing. And look at that. The weekly just flipped green as we were talking. Uh, the weekly's not over yet, but but this looks like a pretty decent trade on there. Now, no, I would not go all in. I would not go and bet the farm, but you get the idea. All right, guys, we're running short on time here. I want to see you've got about 10 minutes and I don't see any other comments here. I'll look a little bit farther 
on this, <laughs> excuse me, but what we can also do is go in here and say, because we know CQT as a part of our deep end list, I believe, unless it's an AI coin, but um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's leading the deep end sector. So looking through the rest of these for secondary ones, it might be moving, we have honey, uh, not quite as strong there. M uh, M -E -X, sorry, MXC. Yeah, the rest of these really not showing enough strength. Okay, to be uh, meaningful. Let me just jump over and look at something else. I don't know. Just for fun, I'm going to look at our speculative degen list and sort these by top movers. CQT is there. We've got Say in there twice. Uh, mobile, right. So you had mentioned mobile, Alex. Um, okay, well, look, um, good, good call. Getting a bullish ERI. Let's take a look at mobile and then we'll wrap things up. And, uh, but, but right away, what did we see though? Very low volume. Very low volume. So over here, that pump and dump was spiked. Oh, you know what? <clears throat> Sorry, my chat was in the way. The volume's not terrible. Should we'll do this chat window over here. <clears throat> All right. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit more than yesterday. And you're saying mobile previously just hit the top of the Bollinger Band. Well, that's over here, Perry, but it's sold off. So what I'd be looking for here is a higher low, because if there's a higher low being put in and we have our early reversal indicator, which at the end of the day, the day hasn't closed yet. So I would be, I would hold on. Uh, one thing we have turned off, by the way, is our, our, our EMAs. And yeah, why are these not on here? So. Uh, I'll take a minute to put our EMAs because, you know, we want to look for rockets as well. And, oh, so EMA. Got that twice on there. And one of them, my default, is the 21-day EMA. So that's that yellow line. And then this one will be green. And uh, that will be 50. All right. Ah, what happened there? Yeah, so one is green, one is yellow. So basically we're running out here. Uh, this is we're seeing too. We're hitting resistance at 50 day EMA. And ideally we want to be above that. I'll check any news. Uh, not so much. All right, so we so we have a bullish EMA. So we almost have a rocket here, but it's, it's not going to qualify. I like the candle. I like the TSI's turning green. The trend pro is showing a, as a key. So Alex, you may be right on that. So what, what should we do? We should wait till tomorrow. Let me do this. I'm gonna open up our trend indicator. We wanna wait. It looks like it responds well to the, the bell signal, at least it has previously. So what we wanna right click, add an alert on trend pro when we get a bell signal right there, it's already preloaded. And uh, and say alert fired. Um, and also want to tell it what it actually means. So, uh, basically, new bell. Bye. Okay. Ah, but it's you always want to put the symbol in there. Mobile, and then the time frame, daily, new bell buy. Okay. So so that will tell us. I would wait on that. I would keep it on your radar. If the TSI also turns green, and if we if the RSI goes red circle, all of these are gonna help, okay? And um, that's what I'd be watching for. So mobile kind of looking good on the daily, weekly. So what else, this is where if you like it in one time frame, always check the weekly to see how that plays out. Weekly also looking good, nice bullish engulfing candle. And the TSI also starting to look green on a weekly time frame. What should you do? You guessed it, set an alert, okay? Right click, center. Trust me, you guys do this and, and really pay attention. Do your, your analysis when markets are quiet and, and, and make sure to name your alerts. So again, we've got mobile, weekly, PSI over 20, and I'd say buy. Okay. Now, these don't mean I just go right in and buy it. It just says, hey, go check it out. Make sure this looks good, but, but it's in a buy status. 
So, you know, mobile is looking good, you guys. Uh, and so we have look at CQT. We looked at mobile. It's just the wild card is, is this big CPI coming out. So I would give this another day or two. All right. What else do we have, you guys? Top crypto gainers. I'm not going to go through all of these low market cap, low volume ones. Uh, you know, C CQT is 1.1 million. Not even huge, actually. Doc has 25 million. Data management. I'm not familiar with Doc. I don't know. Let's see if it's already run 50%, though. This is already run. That's going to be a big green candle. And, uh, well, maybe not. That's 50%. It's, it's so cheap. Um, I don't know. I, all that read it up ahead. Uh, I don't like it. Uh, you know, it's just a little too much. So uh, the rest of these I'm not familiar with, and I haven't categorized them. We could look at beer coin if we wanted to, but why? <laughs> Buy $549 billion? <laughs> Oh, God. Well, all right, you guys. That's all we have time for. I um, say we've already looked at $3 billion circulating supply. Say is a good project. I just wouldn't be looking at it right now. Let's see. I, I will pull up Celestia. We'll do that. We'll end with Celestia, symbol TIA. And uh, we'll see what's going on with Celestia. It did have a big sell-off there. And, uh, okay, Celestia's kind of looking good here. Uh, let's see how this chart loads up. And we have a bell. It, um, it's sold off quite a bit. So what do we want to look for? Well, these controls out of the way here, but uh, we want to look for a uh, trend breakout. If we see a long standing trend downtrend, let me turn off the Bollinger Bands again. You can turn these on and off very easily. So make sure you have them in your arsenal. And I have, I have to exit out of here, though, to get the trend line. So basically, this is what I'm watching for. So. <clears throat> All right. But you know what this looks like to me? It looks like a broadening wedge. Broadening wedge usually expands to the upside. How do I want to draw this here? I guess it's a little bit, well, it's um, it's not really broadening, I guess. It's sort of parallel channel. Uh, originally, I was going to draw it a little differently, but uh, essentially, this this would need to get above 10 for me to be excited about it. Because this could easily reject right here. And uh, where did my EMI go? EMA two of them well this one should be a 50 and 50s are green okay so so same kind of thing you guys uh so that that's you know we'll keep it on the radar if you want here's what i would do with this celestia as uh put an alert here at ten dollars once this would be an indication that it's getting out of the trend zone so these can be great opportunities at the right time Okay, and then I'm going to switch crossing up here. Up up 10, we don't need all the decimals. By there, question marks. And then the second area I would do this, where else could we do a buy alert? I would say right up here above $12 because where this is a likely resistance and support zone. You can see that support flipped as resistance, flipped as stays resistance, resist. So we need to get above $12 really on uh, Celestia. So we go on here, add an alert, crossing up. Okay, so definitely be setting your alerts, everybody. It's, this is the name of the game. So you do your TA when things are kind of quiet, because when the markets are flying, let's say I'm saying by exclamation point versus by question mark, okay? So um, anyway, but as you can see, you guys, the backbone of everything we do are our indicators that we use, the Bollinger Band Pro, the ERI Pro, Trend Pro, the rocket here. We don't see any rockets firing and you can learn more about these, which are the best I've ever used. We've created some of them to be so. And again, if you guys haven't already picked these up, go over to cryptomastery.org slash pro and uh, get it yours, get that lifetime offer. It's, it's definitely worth it. All right, you guys, uh, that's all we have time for here today. Uh, just taking a quick look at um, the iBit uh, blur. Do we like this? We pulled it up for some reason. It's not quite there yet. The trend indicator is turning higher. 
But you know, you can, uh, I suggest you get really good at a handful of these indicators or a handful of the coins using the indicators, understand how they trade like Alex does. He's one of our students in M3, uh, really has mastered this. And, uh, and so once you get it, you get it. Yeah. All right. And the checklist is the key. Um, yeah, I have pulled that up, you guys. Thanks. Uh, hey, Dr. T, how's it going? Good to see you. And as far as that, the uh, if you go to moonstream.io, we've created a cheat sheet for you, and it's a free checklist. Uh, you can also find it on our main website down at the bottom. But if you go to moonstream.io slash free checklist, right, this is uh, how you can use the indicators and what to do, even if you're brand new. So what you'll do is you'll download it. The, the, the uh, interactive version. <clears throat> and I'll hide the video. I guess, I don't know, is the video on? I can't tell. Uh, there, there, I thought the video, oh, there it is. Okay. So basically then go into your folder where you downloaded it, wherever that is, uh, here and there. If any of you guys use Mac and PC, it's always fun trying to remember how, where everything is on both. Okay, so M3, Trader Success Checklist. You want to download that, open that up. Open that up. And where did it go? Over here. I think I've overloaded my system here. Hang on a second. I got the travel Mac. There you go. So basically now it's check markable. It's interactive PDF. We were one of the first to create these. So essentially, if you see a chart and the ERI is showing a green arrow, then you would give this check. And also, does the TSI is TSI green and above the 20 line, as this shows right there, you give it another check. At this point, you have a trade success score of two out of 21. Generally worth taking that trade. If I go down here, two out of 21, it's interactive and gamified. All right, so interactive and gamified. So basically, this is all you need. If you're brand new, you can come to these classes weekly. And there's an excellent training in the members area where we've just recorded new videos, training it for these indicators. Uh, here, the third one, the signal line, as it turned red to green. I did not show that today. But uh, as you can see, as we check more of these off, our trade success score goes up. Is the trend indicator showing a bell or that vertical green line? So you don't even have to have that one turned on if you're using a lower version of trading view that limits how many indicators you can have. You don't even need to have that on there. That vertical green line will show you that. And then also, does the trend indicator uh, show a green line on the base? It does. So as you see more of these patterns, even the ones like bullish engulfing candle, candles, or even as the candle body at support, these are all bullish signals. And by checking them off, now you have a trade su su success score of 7 out of 21. Um, again, I'm usually getting into a trade at two or three and adding to the position the more of these that check out, okay? And so things like is the price above the 21-day and 50-day EMA? Yes, it is. So these are all supporting signals, but this is how you become a better trader. And also you can watch for the bearish signals too to see is this a trade I should stay away from potentially? You know, is there overhead resistance? You can click that. And then that would reduce the trade score by one right here. So you want to go through all of this until you're comfortable. Is it all red on the radar? If it's all red on the radar, I don't get in a long position at all, no matter what. That's a deal killer. For me, that is a red flag, as, as you can imagine. Okay, so it takes a little time, as with anything, to learn these. And there's some advanced setups in here. You don't really need to worry about those, but uh, you do want to be looking at and, uh, and I'll be I'll be adding to this also essentially you know we should an add on there bearish ERIs as well but you you'll get the hang of it right if it's a red ERI on the, on the upside specifically in the weekly that's when we know to get out of these markets and uh, that's proven to be correct time and time again and uh but hey we're not, not here to be right we're here to, to get rich we're here to you know we're here to make money and the signals here really are giving us a um a boost so nice looking candle there on helium um, good call, Alex. I'd want to see it above this 50-day EMA. If it closes above the 50-day EMA, I think this would be a good one to dabble into. And I do have some, so I made DCA in. Uh, you know, that's the name of the game, you guys. Uh, look, I, I bought some helium on this breakout. It was a rare breakout fakeout on this. Uh, we had a lot of good um, 
signals firing back here. I believe it was this one. And then it just dropped, just dumped for no reason. It was a fake out, but I believe it's trying to form in a new upper trading channel. And that's what we always want to look for. So, and uh, our signals to help with that, but that bullish ERI, I don't know. I, I might dollar cost average here and buy some more to lower my cost basis since I bought it right on that breakout and uh, got killed with that thing, right? So where was the trend channel? It was right in here, I believe. So we're trying to get back above that trend channel and then it's off to the races. Trend is your friend until it changes, right? So uh, it's looking pretty good, higher lows. I think Helium Mobile, again, I'd be careful with the CPI because it's looking pretty interesting. You want to keep on your radar. Okay. So that's all we have time for you guys. And uh, so I'll leave some of these charts on here. And then I think there's one other news article. Oh, real quick, Vedek uh, saying now's the right time to shoot for a Solana ETF. Just a little bit more news on that. Okay, you guys, that's all we have time for. And uh, I will let you go. Markets are sort of cooling off. Everyone's waiting for that uh, announcements here on Thursday. So uh, that's a uh, good segue in saying. Have a great week, everyone. We'll see you in tomorrow at noon in M3 class. We'll look at some other trading opportunities. And um, we'll kind of have a game plan for how to play the CPI specifically, what to do, what not to do. And then, uh, of course, uh, Retire Rich is on Thursday at noon as well. Uh, all right, you guys. Take care, everyone. And uh, have a great week. Talk to you soon.